I'm Bill Snodgrass, and in this episode of The World Around Us, we're gonna, we're gonna do a laboratory process. We're gonna use the evaporation technique to separate a solution. And uh, this might be, uh, if, if your hypothesis was, this thing that I have is a solution, I want to find out what is, it is made out of, uh, this might be the first step in doing that. So the, the, the setup, the, the beginning of the process is going to be to create a solution, and then we're going to run through the evaporation process and unsolution it, which is you know not the real word for it, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to evaporate all of the solvent out, leaving the solute behind. So we're going to build a solution of sodium chloride. There is a lab worksheet down in the description section. You may, you may use that. Um, we're going to start with a graduated cylinder and some distilled water and we're going for 30 milliliters. We're going for 30 milliliters because that's about how much conveniently fits in the evaporating dish. We're, this is not like an analytical chemical thing. This is uh, distilled water by the way. Um, this is just we're trying to get it to about 30. I'm not like splitting hairs on this. Around 30. That's just about it. All right, so that's 30 milliliters of water. We're going to put the 30 milliliters of water into the evaporating dish, and then we're going to put the evaporating dish here like the Bunsen burner. We're also going to use five grams, five grams of sodium chloride. I'm going to use a weighing boat. I'm going to put some in here because it's easier to, to put it out. Put the weighing boat on the scale, hit zero, zero the scale. The scale is now zeroed. I'm going to spill the salt on the table. This is why I wear goggles. If this weren't salt, that could have been a bad thing. I'm going to add sodium chloride to the weighing dish salt until it gets to it's coming in. There's 4.73. And why 5? Because 5 is a nice round number. That's 5.02. And now I have 5.2. All right, I'm not going to try to mix. I'm not going to try to mix in the dish. I'm going to mix in a beaker. So I'm going to put the water in the beaker. I'm going to add the salt to the beaker. And then I'm going to agitate it. I'm going to just swirl it in the beaker until it all dissolves. Creating a very high concentration of sodium chloride in the water. spilled some. That's why we're wearing goggles because you know if this weren't salt water that could have been a bad thing. How do you spill water? It's early. It's very early. Alright as I've done in other videos we're going to do the setup and then uh, we'll stop the video and then there will be a result section where I actually carry out. So this is still part of the setup. I've created a very very saturated solution of sodium chloride here. Uh, it's almost all gone. Spill the salt and spill the water. It's one of those welding lighter things. These are tongs. There are different apparatuses for holding this. I've got the little ring stand thing and the and the and that's what we're gonna do there. A little bit more. Alright, so now I have a solution of sodium chloride. I have a uh, evaporating dish. I have a Bunsen burner. Lighting the Bunsen burner. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. I'm going to go ahead and put my solution in. That way I don't have to put my hand over the fire. So my solution is now in the evaporating dish. I'm going to light the Bunsen burner. And now the Bunsen burner is lit. All right, that is the setup for this experiment. That is the setup. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to bring this to a boil. We're going to watch it carefully because we don't want it to overboil. We don't want it to scorch. We don't want it to, we want to watch it. We're going to boil it down. The instructions in the lab, she says, till it's almost dry and then turn the Bunsen burner off. If you're using a hot plate, same thing. 
and then you'll be ready for your results. So there's not going to be a results section and then a conclusion section because the results pretty much give it away. After you see the results, you're going to pretty much know whether or not it was. Well, you know it was a solution because we started. We're just demonstrating the technique. So when all the water evaporates out, we'll see, what, we'll see what's left after that. All right, be right back. All right, for the results section, we are, uh, we've started the Bunsen burner. We are heating the water. It's going to come to a boil. We're going to let that boil. Uh, probably now be a good time for some cinematic B-roll. All right, the water has come to a boil. We have the water boiling. So now we're just gonna, we're just gonna watch it boil um, until it is almost not boil, until there's no, almost no water left. Once the water is uh, mostly gone, then we are going to look at the results. I'm adjusting my evaporating dish, which I did not get very level on the Bunsen burner to start with. This is very hot now. The water is boiling, so you can assume that it is that it is hot. You would not want to touch this with any part of your body. Things like that you have to say. Do not touch the extremely hot evaporating dish. So much for that myth about the watched pot not boiling. Or you can begin to see that there is a, a residue forming on the side of the evaporating dish and it looks like a sort of a whitish powdery residue, a whitish powdery residue forming on the side of the evaporating dish. If you're doing the lab virtually there are some uh, questions that you're going to be asked. There are going to be some questions. One is going to be to describe what the solution looked like before you put it in. The rest of the questions are going to be related to after we are done here. You may be tempted to do this at home using you know, regular kitchen appliances and things. Just remember that if you do this, you're going to end up with a very crusty pot if you boil salt water down in the pot. So uh, be advised, you may have some scrubbing to do after it is done. We are getting close to the point where I'm going to turn this off because I do not want it to, to over overdo um, because it will make it even harder to clean up if you over if you over boil it. You're seeing a lot more crusty stuff on the side of the evaporating dish. And what could that crusty stuff be? The dish is still hot, so it's going to continue to boil. If I were to boil it much longer, it would begin to um, make that much more problematic to clean out. Now that's very hot. The dish is very hot. The dish is very hot. I'm going to let it sit there for a moment. It spews and spatters. If you are observing very closely, you will notice that on the lab table there are places where it is spattered out so you want to be careful not to have that spatter out on you all right let's take our final observation here we're going to put this on a heat a heat safe surface like the lab table and so we can see that the solvent all uh, boiled away, leaving behind this substance. 
the solvent, the solute, the solvent boiled away, the solute is left in the evaporating dish. And since we created the solution, we know what that is. If this were a um, sort of a, a CSI place, an analytical situation, we may now begin to test that residue to see what that residue is. We know what it is because we created the solution. So what happened was the solvent dissolved the solute. We ended up with a solution, the solution of sodium chloride. In order to separate in order to separate a solution, it's a mixture, in order to return it to its constituent parts, one way of separating it is using heat to boil off the solvent, leaving the solute behind. And that's exactly what happened here. All right, there is your, there is your evaporation demonstration exercise. Thank you for watching. Uh, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave me comments, questions, corrections. If I said anything wrong, let me know, because, you know, I say things wrong. And... See you in the next episode.